getting married because I love my fiance. We've been together for uh, just over five years. You know, I, I believe a good marriage starts off as a friendship. I'm getting married because I love Austin. I've known her for five and a half years. And that's a pretty good time to know if you like or dislike someone. I'm very excited for Austin. I think it's what you always wish for for your children is that they find a partner that they can spend their life with. All right, the church's definition of marriage is that it's really a sacrament of the church. The sacrament is an outward uh, manifestation of the Lord's presence. And certainly in a couple, in terms of their love and their affection for one another, this is really a sign of how God shows his love in the real world today, through the love, like through Austin and Tony coming together. You know, it's their way of showing that they are going to be there for each other for the rest of their lives. That's how the church looks at it. It's not here today, go on tomorrow. This is St. Francis Cabrini Garden. Um, this is where we plan to do a lot of like the pre-wedding photos. You have to envision this though with a lot of color and a lot of you know bright, vibrant flowers blooming and very, very hot out as opposed to very cold as it is right now. Um, Tony and I have agreed to not see each other before the wedding, so there's going to be a lot of like hiding, like bring one person out to the garden, the other one sneaking back in a side door kind of thing um, to get all these pictures taken before the wedding. I feel like there has to be religion in marriage in my opinion because there has to be some sort of foundation in what you believe and I think you get that through a religion. I think religion plays a place, plays a part in marriage. I am Catholic and my husband is not. Um, but we have been able to come to a middle road on that subject. I think it's important if, if they're both of the same faith. I think that's a, that's a good unifying factor again. It's something else they have in common that they can use to strengthen their marriage. My definition of marriage is when two people love each other, and they want to spend the rest of their lives with each other. And that means moving away from their parents, living together, uh, handling bills, family issues, as one instead of two separate individuals. I think marriage is an antiquated system that needs to be revised. And that people get involved in marriage without really thinking about it too deeply. And they need to step back and say, am I going to be the same person that I am at 20, that I am going to be at 40. You want to share that with people. You want to share and show people that you're, you're making that commitment. Let's put it on the line and let's see if it works. Let's see if we really do love one another. Let's see if we can make it work. That's, it's like the epitome of, uh, of showing somebody you care, of some, showing somebody how much you do care about them, that you're willing to try this, the hardest thing in the world to get to know somebody and to be in their space all the time. This is the O'Kelly Banquet Hall. This is where we're having our wedding, um, August 4th, 2012. Very exciting. Um, my fiance's father is actually part of the Knights of Columbus, so he was able to uh, you know, really help us get a great deal on this hall. Uh, we've got a lot of amazing things happening. We've got a candy buffet happening. We've got pizza coming in at like 11 o'clock at night for like a late night snack for everyone. It's gonna be awesome. I'm really excited. When it's all said and done, a big party after to celebrate the love and the marriage and all your friends are there and it's just the best day of your life. It's going to be uh, a, on the larger size of a wedding. The guest list right now is right around 200 people. Um, we kind of tossed back and forth whether or not it was going to be small or big. But in the long run, you know, we have relatively medium-sized families on both sides and we have a lot of friends and we don't... I would rather not exclude anyone, you know. This is a happy day for us and we want everyone we know to be there and, you know, be excited for us, you know. It's not about, it's not about putting on a show, it's about, you know, celebrating with your family and your friends and people who will be happy for you. I think weddings make a lot of people a lot of money. And there's a lot of uh, different uh, groups of people who make a lot of money on weddings. And so it's a, a big institution in the United States to spend a lot of money on weddings.
Okay, these TV programs that, uh, you know, the Bridezilla one and the one with the dresses, you know, and the uh, David Tatoga or whatever his name is, you know, that he's the wedding planner, you know, it's, it's big business. They make big bucks, you know, for weddings. And sure, the TV is going to hype it. The media and society in general is obsessed with celebrity weddings because it's a chance for them to make money off of it. It's like Christmas. It's gotten to the point where it's so commercial that you start to lose the real purpose of what it means. I'm not obsessed with the wedding shows. I have watched a couple of like the wedding dress shows when I was in the process of picking out my wedding dress. Um, I watched a couple and I was just appalled. People come in there and say, you know, oh, I have no budget. Well, that must be nice because that's an unrealistic vision of what, you know, normal Americans have to deal with when they're looking, you know, at financing a wedding. I think it's important for couples when they get married or they're considering marrying someone that they remember who they are and and they stay true to themselves and they don't change for the other person. You can't change somebody, okay? You might as well get that through your head right now. When you marry somebody, you're not going to change their family. You're not going to change them. You're not going to make them a up. totally different person. You're not going to work on their character and, you know, make them be more uh, uh, giving and more caring and, you know, the oh, people don't change that way. It's like this is about food and cake. So we got, I got things I cut out of mm. magazines that I liked about cake and food. Like this. Which I think is really cool. You like that? That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Those are edible. Um, meaning you can eat them. Meaning you can eat them. I also liked... After Tony and I started dating, another one of his friends started dating another girl. The following summer we were at their wedding. They've already gotten divorced. I mean, I, I think we're going in with the advantage of, you know, we've been dating for almost six years. We've oh. almost broken oh, up a couple really times because we fight. But I think we've, we've fought See? through it and we've learned from it and, you know, we know what makes each other tick and we know what, what buttons we can push to anger the other person and you know, resolve situations, but, you know, we're just going to make it work. It, it's, it's a give and take. It's a, it's a partnership. Today in our culture, American culture, 50% of the marriages, you know, do not last. 50%. And that's, that's a sad statistic. So what does the church do? What does the Catholic Church do? The big thing is preparation. Pre prepare for a life living situation, not just the ceremony. I think the divorce rates are high because people get involved in marriage without really believing that they're in love with being in love. And so they marry continually with the wrong idea in mind <laughs> that you want to marry somebody who completes you. It's, you know, you want your opposite. You want somebody who's going to, you know, be good for you, that makes you a better person. I remember when my husband brought the engagement ring over and proposed, um, I was scared to death. I had no idea. I didn't even want to take the ring. I didn't take it for a few hours, but then of course I did. It's scary because uh, the divorce rate is high, and it was even high back in, uh, back in the early 70s. It, not, not as high as it is now, which is about 50 percent, but, you know, you just don't want to make a mistake. We ask questions to find out what are the strong points in each of the couple. So like Austin and, and Tony, we're going to be asking them, well, how do you see this? And how do you deal with this? You know, because the strong points in one of the couple is maybe the weak point in the other part of the couple. So together, you know, like hand and glove, they would really help each other. So when one is weak, the other would be strong. But it's good to know that ahead of time. So if this is a strong point, then build on that. Compromise. That's a big word people you need are. to learn. You have all your gifts. They say most marriages end because of money. 
what? because That's people fight about money. Okay. So if you can't talk about that and you can't talk about your feelings and raising children, there's lots of big topics that people need to compromise and be able to talk about. Boy, we'll have our own house with Santa Bear. Yes. He wants to put the lights on the house. I, I don't do outdoor, I don't do exterior lighting. I want a real tree that I, cut, that I cut down myself. No, we're not putting up a real tree. Well, anyway. Austin and Tony that were getting ready for their wedding in August of uh, next year. Um, I'm excited. I think that they have shown over the period of time that I've known them um, that they really are, you know, dedicated to each other and looking forward to a life together. People can have company on their journey in in this life, you know. It'd be pretty boring, I think, if you didn't have someone to share all the good times with and and all the tough times. That person's there as a support to you. Uh, and then they're there to celebrate with you when times are great. He is a great guy. I mean, I can't imagine not ever having met him. You know, I, I've learned so much from him and we've, we've learned so much from each other. And we enjoy spending time together and we, you know, he's been with me through, you know, moving around, losing my job. You know, we've been with each other you know, through losing a grandparent. I mean, we've seen each other through a lot of things, and I can't, I can't imagine having had to go through those things without him by my side. Precious.